Can the world truly be united under one religion? Will this bring peace to the whole world, or will it bring more chaos than the world already has? Hey there, welcome to Eventful Insights. In today's video, we're going to tackle Project Bluebeam, whether it's a conspiracy or if it's the truth. We're also going to talk about what this new world order is all about, if it is truly possible to impose it, and what will happen if it does. But before that, do you think it's ideal for everyone to live under one religion? Let me know in the comment section below. Project Blue Beam, a conspiracy theory originating from Canadian investigative journalist Serge Monast in the mid-1990s, proposes that NASA, in collaboration with the United Nations, plan to orchestrate a New Age religion led by the Antichrist and establish a new world order by simulating a second coming of Christ through advanced technology. This alleged project aims to eliminate traditional religions, establish a one-world religion, eradicate national identities to foster a world identity, and replace the concept of family with individuals serving a new one-world government. Despite its widespread popularity, there is no substantial evidence supporting the claims of Project Bluebeam, which remains an unproven and long-standing but unsubstantiated conspiracy theory. Serge Monast, the theory's originator, passed away in 1996, leaving behind a controversial concept that continues to fuel discussions and speculations about governmental involvement in creating a new world order through deceptive means. But should the narrative end there, and is there truly no space for speculation? Of course, here in Eventful Insights, we go beyond what articles and media channels tell us. To truly understand everything, let's dissect the man behind the so-called Project Blue Beam first. During the 1970s and 1980s, Serge Monast engaged in conventional journalism and actively participated in the Social Credit Party. However, his focus took a peculiar turn in the early 1990s as he delved into writing about the New World Order and secret society conspiracies, drawing inspiration from the works of Canadian author William Guy Carr. Establishing the International Free Press Agency, Monast published much of his conspiracy-themed work through this platform. In interviews, such as one conducted by ufologist Richard Glenn on the television show Esoterim Experimental, Monast appeared disheveled and fixated on warning viewers about the impending threat of a world government. In 1994, he released Project Blue Beam, followed by his significant work Les Protocoles de Toronto in 1995, which exposed the clandestine activities of the Masonic group 666 purportedly orchestrating the New World Order and exerting control over the populace's minds for two decades. Monast claimed to be under police scrutiny for his involvement in forbidden information networks and faced personal turmoil when his children were made wards of the state for homeschooling in September 1996. Subsequently, he was arrested in December 1996, spent a night in jail, returned home, and tragically passed away from a heart attack. While some supporters allege foul play, attributing his death to psychotronic weapons to silence revelations about Project Blue Beam, others cite natural causes exacerbated by stress. Monist's devotees even claim that the character portrayed by Mel Gibson in the 1997 film Conspiracy Theory is based on him. Despite his demise, copies of Monist's writings persist online and have left an imprint on American conspiracy theorists like Texé Mars. Additionally, French publisher and conspiracy theorist Jacques Delacroix has reissued some of Monist's works. How could a rational journalist who had an established career as an academic suddenly propose such a bizarre theory? Or was there truth to it, seeing how he seemed like he had his wits together after all? Is a new world order truly possible? In relevance with the Project Blue Beam is the theory positing that it is possible for a new world order to occur. But there are some noticeable key differences between the two. 
The new world order conspiracy emerged as an evolution of earlier John Birch society theories concerning the United Nations' role. This narrative asserted that the UN served as a communist tool aiming to fully subjugate the United States under its authority, ultimately establishing a global government that would strip Americans of their cherished freedoms. Allegedly, high-ranking American officials were complicit in this scheme. Various conflicting interpretations of the theory emerged over time. One prevalent version suggested that international bankers, often a veiled reference to Jews, manipulated both the U.S. and USSR. Alternatively, some overtly racist proponents blamed Zionists for orchestrating the conspiracy. These strands often intertwined in absurd ways, as many conspiracy theorists believed Jews were behind both banking and communism. While supporters of the theory could identify some alleged participants, the breadth of the New World Order remained undefined. International bodies like the World Bank, IMF, European Union, United Nations and NATO were commonly cited as core NWO entities, with presidents, prime ministers and prominent families such as the Rockefellers, Morgans and DuPonts implicated as key members. In some iterations, these figures were purported to share a common bloodline. Notably, the Rothschild family was frequently singled out as one of the masterminds behind the alleged conspiracy. That was truly a hard pill to swallow, if these theories are true. So before we head on to the second half of the video, let me ask you a question first. Why do you think authorities might want to impose a government or a religion that everyone must abide by? Let us know in the comments below. But is a new world order possible? Could humans be subjected to one rule or religion? A new world order is an idea talked about in different areas like politics and international relations. In international relations, it means a global system aiming for peace and prosperity after big conflicts like World War II. In conspiracy theories, it's seen as a secret, controlling global government run by a powerful group. Some think the current international system already reflects a new world order, while others want a better global system to tackle modern issues. Changes in global power like the rise of BRICS countries also known as Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, and groups like the EU or the European Union, suggest the global order is changing, but we're not sure what a new world order might look like. In today's modern era, there is a lingering suspicion that a new world order may be on the horizon, albeit far from being actualized. With the interconnectedness brought about by globalization, emerging powers like the BRICS nations and the growing influence of regional organizations, the dynamics of global governance are shifting. However, while these developments hint at the possibility of a new world order, significant hurdles remain. Challenges such as geopolitical rivalries, national sovereignty concerns, and the lack of consensus on key global issues underscore the complexity of achieving such a monumental shift in global governance. While the idea of a new world order may intrigue and even alarm many, its realization in today's world is still a distant prospect, requiring careful navigation and collaboration on a global scale. The idea of a new world order, whether discussed in terms of global governance or as part of a conspiracy theory, brings about various implications that can be seen from different angles. A new world order could also encourage nations to work together more closely, leading to better responses to worldwide issues like climate change, pandemics and security threats. Supporters argue that a well-designed new world order might foster peace and stability by reducing conflicts and improving diplomatic ties between countries. Additionally, a revamped global economic system under a new world order might address inequality concerns, promote fair trade practices, and stimulate economic growth in developing nations. However, 
Critics worry that a new world order could weaken national sovereignty by concentrating power in international institutions, potentially curtailing the independence of individual nations. In conspiracy theories, a new world order is often linked to totalitarian control and the suppression of individual freedoms, raising fears of authoritarianism and a lack of democracy. Transitioning to a new world order could lead to geopolitical tensions as countries view for influence and power within the redefined global system, possibly escalating conflicts. Furthermore, the concept of a new world order is intricate, with both potential benefits and drawbacks depending on its execution and underlying values. It's crucial to thoroughly assess the implications of any proposed new world order to ensure it aligns with principles of democracy, human rights, and global cooperation for the benefit of all nations. So, taking these into account, Serge Monast might have been onto something. After all, he was a man with credentials and seemingly had a sound mind before he became the initiator of Project Blue Beam. As said beforehand, with how the world is so connected right now, Project Blue Beam is not entirely impossible, but there's no knowing whether it would do us good or imply mortifying things. Overall, the concept of Project Blue Beam remains shrouded in uncertainty, with proponents and skeptics offering divergent views. While some dismiss it as a far-fetched conspiracy theory, others remain cautious, acknowledging the potential for advanced technology to manipulate global events. Despite the lack of concrete evidence supporting its existence, it's difficult to definitively rule out the possibility of such a scenario unfolding in the future. Thus, while skepticism is warranted, it's prudent to remain vigilant and open-minded about the potential implications of emerging technologies on our perception of reality. Well, that is all for today's video. Don't be shy and tell us whether you think Project Blue Beam is real or not. If you had a great time conspiring with us today, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell to get notified of more of our videos. Thanks for watching.